go. Hi, I'm Kim Duramo, and I've been really excited to share this video with you. So I'm finally with my beautiful sister-in-law. We're in Puerto Rico, and it's a beautiful place to share about what I'm going to be talking about with the pelvis and the pelvic floor. Um, I had a baby six months ago, and after the vaginal delivery, there were a lot of issues I was having with my pelvic floor, specifically some incontinence, some pain, um, urinary incontinence. Um, it's really common that women will have some pelvic floor dysfunction after a delivery, and the more I searched online, the more shocked I was at how little was out there talking about this. And I think we as women, um, there's so much we can share with each other about what's going on in our bodies and what we've learned and what helped or maybe what didn't help that will um, you know, really support each other in this. So um, what was happening for me was, you know, I used to be more of a runner and really active in my body. And so having issues in the pelvic floor, um, especially the incontinence, it was really annoying. It felt like, like the bottom was falling out if I was running or if I sneezed, I'd have a little bit of leakage of urine or if I really had to pee, I couldn't have like a full bladder. I had to run to the bathroom. Um, and I was afraid, there was also a lot of fear because when there's disruption in this area of the body, it can trigger a lot of like, <gasps> I'm not okay. It's not that sense of serenity um, because this is where our energy center for security is located. So when that gets disrupted, there can be a lot of fear. And also the fact that not many people talk about, even doctors talk about the pelvis or the pelvic floor or the vaginal wall or any of that, even for pregnant women, um, it was really disconcerting and I felt really like um, a lot of uh, fear that was coming up around, would this be okay? Would I ever be okay again? Would I ever be able to function um, like I want to? So if you've experienced any pelvic floor dysfunction like incontinence or pain with um, sexual activity, pain in the pelvis, or um, like uh, irritable bladder, sometimes people have like an inflammatory problem with the bladder, it's not an infection, but um, they have like a chronic problem where you feel like you have to pee all the time and it feels like urinary tract infection, but then there's no actual infection, it's just inflammation. Or if you have frequent infections, vaginal infections, bladder infections, um, or also constipation. That was something I wasn't aware of that when um, I was pregnant, um, you know, when you have tension in the pelvic floor, it can cause a lot of constipation. I wasn't aware when I was pregnant that it was more important for me to relax the pelvic floor than to try to tense and strengthen the pelvic floor. Your pelvic floor doesn't need a lot of tension to work normally. It's more important for most of us to have a lot of relaxation, especially if you're going to deliver a baby, where the most important thing, like the work is done by the uterus, not by the pelvic floor. The most important thing is that the pelvic floor can relax and expand. So I think having a extra tension in my pelvic floor made it a little harder to have the vaginal delivery, but like I said, it wasn't something a lot of people were talking about. So I went to this amazing, amazing woman who is a physical therapist, specially trained for women's pelvic floor dysfunction, and she changed my life. And there was a particular one thing she taught me that made a massive difference, and I want to teach that with you. It's called um, Mayan Abdominal Massage. It used to be called Uterine um, Mayan Uterine Massage, but because even if you don't have a uterus, this is very healthy and um, helps restore health even if you don't have a uterus. It's my abdominal massage. So even if the uterus is removed, the fascia, the tissue around the uterus, or the vessels, the nerves, all of those areas in the pelvis are still treated with this massage technique. And you can do it yourself. I am not certified or trained in this. She taught me to do it on myself, and I do it usually once a day. You can do it twice a day in the beginning, and immediately the incontinence was gone. Um, my constipation was improved because I learned how to relax my pelvic floor, and it allowed me to release a lot of tension in the pelvis, but I also felt more of um, like that solid, balanced alignment that has you feel that internal sense of serenity and security and strength. So if you zoom in, I'm gonna share with you what she taught me to do. Um, first, here's the pelvic bone. So, you know, it's a pubic symphysis where the two halves of your hip bones meet in the front. This is sort of like a joint in that there's a tiny bit of motion in this bone 
but it's actually kind of more fused than a joint. Joints have more motion. This is called a syndosmosis. It's not an active joint where there's a lot of motion, but it's not a completely fused bone. There's a little bit of motion in this pubic symphysis. So that's like your, you know, the bumpy area right here if you feel on your pelvis. So what you wanna do is you lay down flat and keep your feet right at your hip distance. And so that kind of relaxes your abdominal wall. Now you're gonna use your hands to gently massage the lower part of your pelvis. And I'm gonna show you a little bit and then describe what I'm doing. So she had me kind of press in just a little bit and then scoop in and scoop up and pull up. What this does is it lifts the uterus and all of the fascia around the uterus off of that bladder and off of the tissues in the pelvis. And instead of everything being congested down, it allows everything to lift up very, very gentle. So you just go straight up toward the belly button. You come about halfway up to the belly button with each stroke. And you can do about 10 of these strokes. The pressure that I used was way too much, so she taught me to use less pressure. So if you try to just use too much pressure, like push like you're pushing all the way down to the sacrum, push like you're pushing all the way down to the spine, and that's, let's say, 10 out of 10 pressure, and then just push like you're just barely skimming the surface of the skin with hardly any pressure, and we call that one out of 10 pressure. And the level where she had me was at about a three or a four. It was much less than I thought, and sometimes we tend to kind of go for it, and you put too much pressure, you don't need to do that. So we just put a little bit of pressure down, gently, 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 over clothing, over a layer. If you have a nightie on, or if you have a cotton t-shirt on, or something when you go to sleep at night, it's great to do it all over that layer. So you kind of just gently, gently, lifting, 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 about 10 times. And then there's a second part to this, to go diagonally. So here's your pubic symphysis, and here's my sit bones. These are, you know, the front of your hip bones. It, there's a little prominence there. So you're gonna bring your hands again together like this, right in the angle, and you just gently come in the opposite direction diagonally. And she had me come, I'd say, a little bit above that prominence, not directly over to it. Here's mine, but kind of in this direction. Everyone's pelvis is a different shape. So it may be a little different for you, but you just come at this angle, cross over the midline and come onto the other side. So you would just scoop down, press in just a little bit, like 30 or 40% of what you would think, uh, 30 or 40% of the max, and you cross over the midline to just gently lift the tissue. You can talk to your tissue too, especially if you've had a vaginal delivery. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. It's the Ho'oponopono mantra. It's a very powerful healing mantra. Your tissue responds to this because there can be a lot of trauma you've gone through if you've delivered a child or if you've ever had any kind of sexual um, assault or if you've ever just had sex with anyone that you felt like, oh, that didn't feel right. I feel like I forced my body through something that didn't feel right for me. I didn't check in with my body. I didn't ask her, what, how do you feel about this? What are you ready for? Or maybe it's someone you want to have sex with, but you weren't ready, you didn't prepare, you didn't honor your body and give her the time that she needed to be fully prepared for that sexual encounter. I know this happens so often because you're like, I have kids, let's get to bed, let's, let's just kind of make it quick. But if we don't check in with our body, it is a traumatic um, assault on our own body. So you can just say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I love you. For all the times you've forgotten that part of the equation, you haven't tuned in with your own body. So opposite side, you gently press in, come up and diagonally across the midline to the other side, gently lifting the tissues back up. Talking to your body can restore resilience. Those cells are listening, they're very, very responsive. Not just the muscle cells, but the fascia. The fascia is the tissue that the nerves run through, that the vessels run through, that the lymphatics run through, and all of your organs are sitting in fascia. So you can actually just talk and that area of your body has been shown to contract or to expand. You're allowing a realignment here. So just let your body know, I am so sorry all the times I've neglected you, I've not paid attention to you, I've not tuned into you, I thought you didn't matter, I thought something else was more important. Especially sexually, 
we so often do this and then we hold all that trauma and tension in the pelvis so we can have those chronic inflammatory problems, chronic sexual problems, problems with lubrication, problems like I had with incontinence or just the pelvic floor not having that buoyancy. And you can end again, so you do the one side diagonal, the other side diagonal. You're gonna spend like two to three minutes total. And then you end on the upswing. So just gently pressing, pulling, allowing your body to relax and lifting up, massaging up with gentle, tender touch and give your body that love. So this is my an abdominal massage. You could certainly learn, learn more about this. If you are a practitioner and you wanna be certified, you could be certified in this. Um, and Levesque, L-E-V-E-S-Q-U-E. She is located in the Boston area, but she is gonna be getting some stuff online. I very emphatically invited her to, you've gotta put this online, you've gotta share this online. And so when she has that together, I will be sharing much more from Anne Levesque. Um, you can go to her website um, as well. It's annelevesque.com, L-E-V-E-S-Q-U-E. And she's amazing, just to give a shout out to her. She really helped immensely. <laughs> Our video is about to end because there's construction. So I want to say lots of love. I'm at drkimd.com and you can find more if you subscribe. Lots of love and I'll see you soon.